organizing with folders. Now what do they say? Organization is half the battle. Or is it, sometimes you must lose a battle to win the war. Or maybe it's, birds of a feather flock together. Anyway, let's just combine all these wise sayings and win the battle over organizing and finding our data using folders in Outlook 2003. Oh, and don't forget, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, or something like that. In this Outlook 2003 nugget, Organizing with Folders, we're going to cover five main objectives. First of all, we want to get an overview of Outlook folder management. Then, we want to look at how we can implement multiple folders and why. Then, we'll look at automatic archiving into folders in Outlook. Then, searching and finding. And then finally, we'll look at some essentials of public folders. Okay, well I'm in my calendar in my Outlook 2003 profile and we're going to be talking about folders in this nugget and the, and the great thing is we've already covered quite a bit of information in this particular nugget just through our normal activities of looking through different objects in Outlook 2003. Now you know we have these folders over here. I've got the calendar folder and again whenever you choose a folder item and you click on the new button it's going to create a new object that is part of the formatting of that particular folder and the objects that go in that folder by default. So for example, a new calendar object in that folder is going to be an appointment. If you go to the contacts, you create a new item in the contacts folder, it's going to be a new contact. If you go to the journal and you click on new, you'll get a new journal. So I think you get the message here. Now in addition to the, the folders that we've seen already, like calendar, uh, contacts folder, the journal folder, the notes folder. We've also got other default folders like the deleted items folder, which has deleted items to recover in there, our drafts folder. If you don't finish an email, you click on save, it goes to the drafts folder. You're already familiar with the inbox folder, but you've also got an outbox folder, messages waiting to be sent in a queue, and of course sent items, items that have already been sent. Now again, there's other folders as well. We'll look at these later on in this nugget, and that is public folders. Public folders are folders that Exchange administrators create on an Exchange server, and they are just what they call. They're public folders. They're for public use by the entire organization, uh, also people outside of the organization for a wide variety of reasons, and we'll talk about these as we progress through this nugget. Now realize that in these particular public folders, uh, depending upon what I've given permission for and what the administrator has set these up as, I can create a wide variety of objects in these public folders as well. So this is the storage hierarchy that we have here uh, in our Outlook 2003 environment. You already know a great way to access your folders over here is the folder list. If the folder list isn't showing for some reason, you're not viewing it, you can always get there quickly by going to go and choosing folder list or a good thing to remember control six. Control six gets you to the folder list very quickly. Now there's a brand new very cool feature in Outlook 2003 and it's favorite folders. Now, for example, if you're over here in the navigation pane side and you click on, let's say, the mail button, well, once I do this, notice that up here now above all my folders is an area called favorite folders and it's there for mail. Let's talk about those favorite folders for a second. Notice how with favorite folders it's going to give me, by default, the inbox folder, a folder for unread mail to differentiate that, mail that needs to be needs to have a follow-up on it if you've uh, attached that follow-up feature to the mail and sent items. This is the default. Also notice that down here it's going to show under the folder list just the folders that relate to mail. Now this particular favorite folders view is going to differentiate depending upon the type of object you choose. For example, if you choose the calendar, then under your favorite folder you're going to see all your calendars in a little bit thinner view here. If you choose tasks, you'll see all of your different 
types of tasks here. Tasks, the ones you've broken down into personal sales and categories, the subfolders you created in tasks. Also, under contacts, it'll break it down into the folders you've got under contacts. Contacts, archive, personal, corporate, shared, and then different ways to view these. So your favorites folder is going to be different depending upon the Outlook 2003 item. I'm back in my calendar view looking at the folder list here and realize I can always add a mail and post folder, for example, like golf, to my favorites folder. I just simply go and right click on there and choose add to favorite folders and now it's going to be there in my mail favorites when I click on the mail object, for example, and there's my golf folder. Pretty cool. If you want to rename a folder, you can do that at any time by just simply right clicking on the folder and choosing rename whatever it is, whatever the object is. I'll call this golf auctions. I buy a lot of golf supplies on eBay, so I'll put golf auctions here and rename that folder. Very easy. Let's go down here. Let's say under inbox I made a new folder called family. I put my family email in here. Email from kids, from the wife, from uh, brothers, uh, family members. And if I want to move this or copy it somewhere else, just right click on there and I can choose move or copy. And you get this dialog box. It basically asks you where do you want to copy it to. If I want to copy it to the main top of the hierarchy. I can click on OK and I can do that. And I've got family here under my main hierarchy. I can also take family and drag it up to the folders, favorite folders area and put it right in there if I want to. So again, like you can with any kind of directory item or folder item in any kind of file system, you can copy and move folders. You can obviously create new ones and of course rename them and right click on them and delete them using a wide variety of methods. Don't forget the delete key as well. Now folders also have a wide variety of properties that we can configure and manage within Outlook 2003. If I go to this family folder, which is a mail and post item folder, and I right click on it and choose properties, I'm going to get this dialog box. We're going to be in this dialog box several times throughout this Nugget series here, but let's talk about this general page first of all. First of all, I can rename the folder right here if I want to. I want to name it Family Mail. I can just go ahead and retype that in here. These two items are read-only properties, the type of folder. It's mail and post items. Again, if I would have opened up, let's say, another type of item like a contacts folder and looked at the properties of the contacts or the tasks, again, it would tell me the type that it is. This is the location. It's in the top of the hierarchy here, right under the mailbox for Michael Shannon. I can describe this uh, mail from uh, family members. Show number of unread items. This little default over here, like it shows seven right next to it. The default setting is to show the number of unread items kind of in bold in parentheses here. If I want to show the number of items in the folder, regardless of whether they've been read or unread, I could choose this radio button and that changes this number right here to the total number of items, not unread items. Now when you're posting to this folder, you're going to use in the default formatting is the IPM.post format. The only other option here is for forms. And we're going to look at forms in a dedicated nugget coming up uh, towards the end of this nugget series on an introduction to Outlook Forms. Very cool nugget. You're going to really enjoy that one. Now realize that uh, each one of these particular types of folders, contacts, tasks, journals, all have their own type of formatting and then in addition they have the Forms option to give you ability to really customize that. By default, I'm automatically generating Microsoft Exchange views so that in a Microsoft Exchange server environment, this allows other users to view the folders. I can also get folder size information by clicking on this particular button right here. There's no data in this folder yet, as you can see, but I can also get stats on the folder. That's the general tab and the properties of the folder object. I'm going to go down to the navigation bar and click on folder list. And if I open up a contacts folder, let's say like corporate, and I right click on that one and choose properties, you're going to see a 
uh, very similar type of property page. And again, some of the same options, the read-only options, the contact items, where the location is. Again, the same kind of options here. When posting to this folder, it uses the IPM.contact format, or you can go and you can choose custom forms again. So you have some of the same types of properties for each one of these folders. While we're in the actual contacts properties, let's go up here to the Outlook Address Book tab and check out this particular tab. What you can do here is a couple of things. The default setting here is to show this folder as an email address book. We've actually already seen this uh, in the address book area, but what this does is this option will let Outlook display contacts in such a manner that it allows you to choose email addresses from the address book dialog box and of course the name of the address book being corporate which is the default name of this particular folder so Outlook address book options under the corporate properties or the properties of this particular corporate contacts folder now if you remember from the contacts movie earlier in this nugget series when you double click on a contact and you go to the tab called activities you see a variety of entries in that activities area well you can control that for the folder using this activities tab right here and you can see here this shows the folder groups by default that are in the activities tab of the corporate contacts folder i've got a journal folder i've got upcoming tasks and appointments contacts notes email and again the emails from my mailbox Michael Shannon and you can also of course you can modify individual uh, settings of this by choosing modify you can go in you can pick and choose what's going to be in that particular area uh, of the activities of the contact so it's very highly configurable and what I'm showing you here really is that all of these folders regardless of whether it's a calendar folder a uh, task folder, a contact folder, a mail and post folder. All of these have a properties tab and you want to spend a little bit of time to come in here. Again, we're going to return to this to look at areas like forms, for example. But you want to kind of get a good feel for the different types of properties you can configure on a property by property basis item by item in Outlook 2003 for your folders. We could spend quite a bit of time here just going point by point, but you want to take some personal time to familiarize yourself with that for uh, the purposes of being more efficient in your program, but also for testing purposes. I'm going to click on OK, and I'm going to get out of here. Well, as you know by now, I'm using the Exchange client in an Exchange server with my Outlook 2003 profile here. So my messages, my calendar folder, my other items, they're all centrally stored up on an Exchange server or servers. Now I can use additional PST or personal folder files uh, alongside my Exchange server account, but and I showed you how to do that earlier on. But if you're not using Exchange server, you would very likely uh, create multiple personal folders for data management and data organization. Let me get rid of this real quick. Uh, and realize that you can have multiple PST files. Uh, you can categorize them. You could have one that you use for your archiving purposes. Maybe you have one that you uh, share it. You right click on it and share it over your network. To create additional data files or PST files, let me show you real quick. You just go up to New or File and go new Outlook data file. And I would create a new data file here. And by default, I want to create an Outlook personal folders file. I would use this option if I'm not using a previous version of Outlook uh, anywhere else in my correspondence. Uh, and realize that this is Outlook 97 through 2002, you'd choose this option for backward compatibility. And again, you click on OK, and it allows you to name it and save this. And in this personal folders file, I'll just call this personal folders 1 here. In this personal folders file, you have the ability to set some options here. I'll go ahead and leave the default name personal folders. The locations in my profile on my workstation, uh, encryption, uh, you can have no encryption, compressible, high. We'll talk about security here uh, in, in an upcoming nugget, but I'll click on OK. I can now scroll down and see my personal folders uh, folder down here, and I can, of course, add new items to that if I want to. 
uh, place new folders in that folder. And again, what type of item do I want this to be? Do I want it to be a calendar item, a contact item, journal item? So I can create my own hierarchy of personal folder and folders within Exchange. Now I can also go down here to this little shortcut on my navigation bar, choose that and say, you know what, I want to create a new shortcut. And the shortcuts is a cool area to use to get you to Outlook today. You could put your inbox in here, add a new shortcut to what? My personal folders, okay? And now there's my personal folders. So the shortcut area is also kind of a favorites where you can add shortcuts to your favorite areas, to family, to golf, auctions, to those things like that. Just add a new shortcut and we can get all those things right here in your shortcut area. You can add this to your view. So we've got personal folders. Again, if you're not in an exchange environment, it's quite likely you'll have multiple personal folders, multiple PST files to organize and to share items uh, within Outlook 2003. Change my mind, I want to remove this particular personal folders, this PST file. Just go back up to File, Data File Management, find the personal folders, and then remove it. Are you sure you want to? Yes. Close this. And again, if I'm in an exchange environment, I can create one additional PST file, one additional PST personal folder. If I'm in an environment that's not Exchange Server, maybe an IMAP client, a POP client, uh, some other system, I can have multiple PST files, multiple personal folders. All right. Now, chances are, as time goes on, you're going to want to move some of your Outlook items to a different place in Outlook 2003 because you no longer use them or access them on a regular basis. But you don't want to permanently delete them. A good example of this is your the items in your sent items folder. Your sent items folder can get pretty big. It has a, a list of all the things that you've sent uh, out of Outlook 2003. From time to time, you may want to move these or automatically archive these uh, to a different location in Outlook 2003. Let's talk about the auto archive feature now as well as manually archiving your data as well. By default, Outlook 2003 is going to archive to a personal folder or a PST file. It's called archive.pst. And you have some general overall auto archiving options, and we get to those in a very familiar area. Let's go up to Tools, Options, and then click on the Other tab. <laughs> this is Other Stuff. Notice we've got an auto archive area. Manage your mailbox size by deleting old items and moving them to an archive file, archive.pst. And it'll also delete expired items. Click on the auto archive button. Now the default setting for Outlook 2003 is to move all of your items to the archive.pst file every two weeks or every 14 days, as you can see here. Now it's going to move these items by clicking here and kind of use my arrow over you can see this is the location my profile application data Microsoft Outlook that very familiar folder archive.pst that's the file now if you get a lot of email messages a lot of information you may want to move this to every three days every seven days uh, anything between a one and sixty you can configure here to automatically move items to this PST file do you want to be prompted before the auto archive runs? If you have this checkbox checked off, it'll pop a little box off saying, I'm getting ready to auto archive now, and you have the ability to cancel out of there if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and deselect this option because that's really annoying for me. I'm going to go down during the auto archive process. Do you want to delete expired items? And expired items are going to be items in the archive or in the PSD file that have been there uh, six months or longer. This is the default. Now, this is only going to apply, it's only going to delete items in your email. So, uh, this is a six month process for when you run the process or auto archive, you want to go ahead and delete the expired items. Now, Outlook has different periods, different aging periods. For different items in Outlook. For example, calendar items, uh, journals, notes, uh, your drafts, and your inbox folder has this default of six months. But sent items and deleted items are going to be two months, and the outbox 
is going to be three months. And your and this is important. Your contacts folders do not have an auto archive option, so you have to manually archive your contacts. Keep that in mind. Very important. Now, do you want to show your archive folder? in the archive folder or the folder list over here and again if you don't want to have that archive folder show up over here deselect it i like to leave mine over here because from time to time something will get archived and i actually wanted it to go back into sent items or back into my inbox so i'll open that up and just right click and just move the item back over into the inbox or whatever folder i wanted it into now a very dangerous setting uh, is this permanently delete old items uh, this is very dangerous because this really removes your ability to kind of recover some of those old items from your archive. So be very careful. I would recommend not choosing this option to permanently delete old items. It really takes away some of the safety net of Outlook 2003. And again, after six months, items are going to be deleted. And you can change this to be uh, every three months, every two months, every 30 days if you want to, to actually clean out or delete older items in the archive.pst file. So those are the general auto archive options. Now you can also set archiving options and override these general options on a folder by folder basis by going to the properties. Let me show you that. If I want to create my own options for my calendar, I can right click on the calendar folder, go to properties, and I've got an auto archive tab there. Now by default, uh, I'm archiving the items in this folder based on the default archive settings. And again, this button right here gets me right back to where I was just a while ago under Tools Options. So I can get to this uh, general uh, area right here by getting there from the properties of any one of these objects. Or I can override these default settings. Again, this is a radio button. I can uh, deselect these. I can also not archive at all. But I can also archive and say, you know what, let's clean these out after four months and then move the items to a different location. I think if I scroll over here, the default location again, just want to remind you, is archive.pst. But I could browse and create a separate PST file just for my calendar options. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. I want to go ahead and keep the uh, default settings on my calendar. Now, as I mentioned, there is no auto archive feature for your contacts. So if I want to go ahead and archive my contacts items manually, I'll just choose contacts, go up to file on the main menu. and I'm going to scroll down. If I have to expand this out, find the archive option, and I can archive the contacts, uh, this folder, and all of its subfolders, all items that are older than. I can pick a certain date if I want to. And I can say also include items, even items that have the do not archive option selected on that particular item. And again, the archive file, let's kind of show you this again, it's going to archive these to my PST file. I could browse and create a new one just for my contacts. Again, no auto archive on contacts. You have to do it manually by going to file archive. All right, excellent. your archive occurs, you can see over here in under my mailbox hierarchy, my folder list, I've got an archive folders object. I can expand this out and at any time I can go find an archived item, something that's archived from sent items. I can just simply right click and I can move this particular item uh, to back to or click and drag this item back to my inbox just by dragging it up here if I want to. So I've got the ability to go and retrieve anything I've archived uh, from my archive folder areas, calendar, deleted items, my drafts, my family, everything I have archived uh, by default, auto archiving or manually archived. And this is all contained in one archive.pst file. Excellent. Now, when it comes to searching and finding and organizing mail messages in Outlook 2003, there's a great new feature called search folders. Let me scroll down here. Maybe you've seen this folder in the folder list throughout this Nugget series and were highly curious. Well, I hope so. It's good to have a curious nature. Well, the search folder is not really a folder like the other Outlook item folders. It's actually more like a saved search, a logical set of properties stored for a particular group of mail items. 
Another way to look at this is like a rule that moves virtual messages to a special folder. For instance, if I wanted to create a search folder that contains all of the inbox and sent items messages from Brian Cuban, I could do it very easily. Now the original messages, however, actually still exist in my sent items folder and inbox folder. Okay, It's kind of a virtual view. So we've got by default basically three customized searches, search folders already made for us. We have one that shows all of the uh, email messages that are set for follow-up. We've also got one that's for all the large mail, mail over 100K in size. And then all of our unread mail goes to this search folders for unread mail. Now you can actually configure this large mail folder, for example, if you right click on it and choose customize this search folder, if you have a lot of mail over 100K, you could just come into the criteria and say, you know what, let's go ahead and choose mail that's over, let's say, 200K or maybe 500k only to show up in this area. Click on OK and then OK again. Now even though having an automatic saved search for all your follow-up messages, all of your large mail, all of your unread mail is pretty cool, the power of search folders really comes in when you can suit this to your own particular needs, uh, your own custom criteria to locate the messages that you want. So let's go ahead and create a search folder and we'll create a new search and we'll have items show up in that particular folder. And to do this, I'll just right click on search folders and create new search folders and you get, you get this dialog box. Now notice I have a bunch of already predefined search folders in this dialog box and we've already noticed that we've got unread mail, mail flag for follow-up, and mail either unread or flag, and these are showing up down here. There's one other that makes four, it's called important mail. I didn't have any mail that was marked as important, so a folder really wasn't created here for me, but you can also add that one as well. This, when, in the first iterations of Outlook, this used to be in there. Now you have to come in here and add it if you want to. But notice other predefined options. Uh, mail from people. I can say mail from and to specific people. I can go in here and choose somebody from my contacts in my global address list like I mentioned earlier. If I uh, look through here, I can. this is actually my Outlook uh, contacts folder. If I want to go to my global address list, all my users, I can say maybe, you know, here's uh, Brian Cuban as I mentioned. So all mail from and sent to Brian Cuban I can create a, a custom search folder for that. Here's what I really like about this feature is you can search mail not only in your existing mailbox, but you know what? I can also go look in my IMAP remote account, which I will we'll look at later on in this nugget, but also I can create a search folder for my archive folders. Man, is this a really valuable feature to be able to use and go back and look at your archive mail messages and create a custom search folder just for that. I can click on OK and now I have one called Brian Cuban and in Brian Cuban there's all my messages to and from that particular individual from my existing mailbox. Now I can do the same thing, go to new search folder and I can do the same thing with Brian Cuban by going mail from and to, but this time going and choosing in my archive folder. So very powerful. I can also say mail from specific people, just mail sent to me, or how about mail that's sent to distribution list? And of course we can go choose from existing distribution lists that we've created, for example, my new list. So I can leverage the power of a distribution list with a search folder. Very cool. And of course, also other predefined options. I can say, let's let's kind of create a search folder to organize our mail. I want all my large mail. We've got one already, of course. All my old mail. How about organizing a search folder for just the mail that have attachments on it? Okay? So very, very powerful. Or how about mail with specific words? Very cool. And then just go choose and, can, and uh, pick out a particular word and go search for mail with those words in it. Let's say plus ultra group, one of my partner companies, and have a special search folder for plus ultra group mail. Excellent. Now, if none of these things work for you, none of these predefined options work for you, you can always create a custom search folder. Click on this option, go to choose, and it's going to allow you to set the criteria for this search folder. You would name it call it 
custom search, go to criteria. Again, you can also look other places besides your mailbox and say, I want to search for certain words in the subject field, uh, in the frequently used text fields, the subject field and the message body, uh, who it's from, who it's sent to, uh, where I am, okay? Uh, where, where I am the only person in the to line or where I am in the uh, carbon copy line. So it's very, very flexible, uh, that a time stamp. Uh, so all these criteria, and you have advanced choices as well to go to different fields here and really get granular to create these custom search finding options. And of course, searching is a great thing, but more important than searching is actually finding. So uh, finding is the real key here, finding and organizing. And the way we do that uh, in Outlook 2003 is by using search folders. I want to highly recommend that you take some time uh, out of your day to go in and really get comfortable uh, with using the search features, make a few of your own custom searches using your mail messages, and really leverage this uh, to a great degree to really speed up your day and become a more efficient power user of Outlook 2003. All right, fantastic. Let's go look now at the concept of public folders in an exchange environment. For the last part of this nugget, I want to give you a little bonus as we talk about public folders through Outlook 2003. Now, public folders are used to make a wide variety of information available to internal users as well as web users. It's very common to have public folder hierarchies set up actually to support corporate websites and other uh, partners and client websites as well. They're just gen generic containers. Now, public folders exist on an Exchange server and are replicated throughout the Exchange organization for, quote, public use uh, by the organizational public as well as the general public using the internet or what are called extranets with partners. Now, the public folder structure is also used to support news groups in an Exchange enterprise as well. I realize that the knowledge of creating and managing public folders is not tested on the Microsoft Outlook 2003 exam. However, as an Exchange administrator or a delegated power user, it's imperative that you know the basics of working with public folders through Outlook because your options are really limited when accessing them and creating them through the Exchange System Manager on your Exchange server. Now, when you go into your folder list in your Outlook client by default, what you're going to see under public folders are two uh, default containers. The favorites, which may or may not have anything in it, and all public folders. And then by default, when you expand out all public folders, what you will normally see is not Nugget Lab, but just internet news groups. Whatever internet news groups you have visible and available to you as your user, for example, uh, M. Shannon at NuggetLab.com based on your exchange administrator or news group administrator for whatever news groups you're seeing from the outside world or internal news groups. Now what we can see here is we've got another public folder structure that was created by an exchange admin. It's called Nugget Lab. Underneath it, I've got other folders, community, developers, IT. These were created using Exchange System Manager up on the Exchange server, but it's very limited. And I can see if I right click on one of these, uh, I can't put a new folder in here. Uh, I really can't uh, rename it or delete it or move it. If I go in here, open it up, I can go and post something to it, a new post, but that's about it. As a matter of fact, these particular folders are what are called mail and post folders. In other words, I can post mail messages in here. I can post internal messages uh, between users in here, kind of a kind of a pseudo makeshift uh, message board. But that's all. Now, if I want to go and create my own public folder structure for my internal use in my organization, I have the ability to do that if I have the permissions. Now, it just so happens 
that my user account, I'm a full exchange administrator in my exchange organization. So I have the ability to go up here to all public folders and right click and actually create a new public folder. Now one of the advantages of being an exchange admin in creating your public folder hierarchy and your structure from Outlook 2003 is when you create your new folder like this, you aren't limited to just mail and post items. I can create a folder that has all different types of items, calendar items, contact items, journal items, and the like. What I would generally do, however, is create a top level uh, mail and post items folder and then create additional folders within that that can contain separate uh, contacts, calendars, things like that. So let's go ahead and create a new folder now and we'll create one for uh, what would be a particular project. And this project wants to use all the different Outlook 2003 items we have available to us. Let's go ahead and call this Security Project. I'll type Security Project in here. It's going to be in the All Public Folders area. Click on OK. Now I have a new, in the all public folder, if I scroll down here, I'll, I'll contract this. I've got what's called security project. Now I can right click or open this up. I can right click in here and create a new post in this folder. I can create a new folder inside security projects. And this folder inside this particular security project folder could be one that contains my calendar items, my security calendar my journal, security journal, my security notes, and then I can have individual users, since these are uh, stored up on the Exchange server, these can be replicated throughout my entire organization and even made available to the outside public or to partners or to other clients uh, using web-based technologies uh, and using the internet or using private networks. So I have the ability now to come in here and create additional types of folder objects. For example, we'll just call this security. I need to spell that correctly. Security calendar. Click on OK. And now security calendar, if I double click on this, you can see it's a calendar object. And I've got one just for this security project, this public folder. And again, up there accessible to everyone that the exchange administrator has given permissions to and access to. Now I have the ability, of course, to go right to the security project folder and right click and go to sharing. And you're familiar with this dialog box. I can now go and manage the permission levels of this particular public folder. And I can go say, you know, who's going to be authors, publishing editors, not editing reviewers. And you can see how this really gets granular. And this is really a great feature, especially if your company actually deals with publishing, whether it be publishing web-based documents, publishing newsletters, publishing books. You can create a security project. You can create a public folder on a book project or a newsletter project or a magazine project basis, uh, issue by issue, book by book, web-based area by web-based area. And you can have a team of people that have access to this. And you can have your, your project management calendar. You can have your task uh, particular folder with all of your different tasks in there. You can have kind of a mail and post items folder. So you can uh, make internal postings. You can respond to postings kind of like a little bulletin board. You can journal your activities with your own journal inside of this particular uh, area. Go ahead and put security journal in there. Click on OK. You have your own particular journal just for this project. So you can see that, and again, the thing about public folders is that they're powerful because they really are public and they can be managed and they can be secured from an organizational standpoint using all the benefits of exchange, replicated. For example, if Nugget Lab had a central office in Dallas and we had branch offices in Abilene, Texas, Denton, Texas, Austin, Texas, Tyler, Texas, I could take certain aspects or the security project public folder itself, and I could replicate just that particular public folder to all these branch offices on a regular basis. That way, those individuals in Austin 
and Denton can work on the same project and they can access those particular items and those components uh, from servers that reside in their particular networks, not having to use internet bandwidth or low or high cost, uh, low uh, connection bandwidth to actually get access to these calendars, these journals, and these post items. Again, I don't want to bog you down with too much of the details of public folders. It's really an exchange uh, topic. However, as an exchange admin, or it may be the case that you as a power user of Outlook 2003 may be given the permissions and the authority over certain public folders in the public folder hierarchy by a systems administrator so you can manage certain departments, certain teams of people, and certain projects. So understanding this from an Outlook 2003 point is very, very important. All right, fantastic job. Well, I think it's safe to say that by now you're an official certified uh, power user of Outlook 2003, advanced user, and this particular nugget just pushed you farther along that process. As you looked at organizing an Outlook with folders, you looked at Outlook folder creation and management, implementing multiple PST files or multiple personal folders in Outlook. We also looked at the automatic archiving into folders as well as uh, creating manual archiving to that archive.pst file. We looked at searching and finding with the new feature search folders in Outlook 2003, and then very powerful public folders and the essentials of managing public folders, creating them and managing them from the Outlook 2003 side as an exchange administrator or a power user. I hope this CBT nugget's been informative for you. I want to thank you for viewing.